So I make a lot of electronics and do hobby nerdy things, but also I really love music. I've got a really nice old Pioneer PL12D record player and you know, I've got a lot of CDs too. But there are some things like MP3s that I don't really listen to. I don't have the hardware to use it and it's just not something I want to put on my phone. But here is the nerded up version of my music system. It can be controlled via your phone and a computer on the same network. So a company called Rykelt got in touch with me. These guys just somewhere around here, there'll be like a logo. Uh, they got in touch and said, do you fancy making something with us? And I said, yeah, sure. And I checked out their website and they sell loads and loads of things. Anything a hobby, hobbyist would like uh, really to create stuff like this. So this is a Ruin audio player with a Raspberry Pi inside, a Hi-Fi Berry DAC Plus, um, and it also has the official Raspberry Pi touchscreen and a massive SD card to store all the music on. And it's a pretty awesome little thing. So we've got stuff we can add to the queue. You can sort things by genre, by artist. You can even play internet radio stations or stuff from a Samba share. So that, or, well, any kind of share, like a NAS drive, something like that. You can also just plug a USB drive in with MP3s on it and play it straight off there. It's pretty awesome. Now, I don't have a lot I can play you. Uh, pretty much one track is all I'm choosing to play because it's uh, otherwise it's copyrighted. So these are the parts we're going to need. I'm going to choose this side as the mandatory side. This is the side that you're going to need to do any part of this project. And this is the sort of extras side. So you don't necessarily need everything here, but it makes it cooler. So we'll start off with the Raspberry Pi. Now you can use a two if you want. I've chosen to use a three because it's got Wi-Fi on board. Makes it a lot easier to use later on. So we need, we need the Raspberry Pi. You're gonna need a micro SD card. Now this one's a massive one, so this is 128 gig. However, you can use a smaller one. Something like eight gig will be fine, but you won't be able to store very much music on it. But you can use the USB, so you could just plug in a, a USB drive. So it is mandatory to have one, but not necessarily one that's 128 gig. You're definitely gonna need a screen. So this is, the official Raspberry Pi touchscreen. This one connects via the DSi connector. So that's that connector there on the Raspberry Pi. You'll use a little flex cable to do that. These can be picked up relatively cheaply, something around 30 pounds, I believe. So these are very recommended because they've got the touch display on them too. You can use this headerless, so you don't need to use a display, but I wanna make a cool little display for this one. So I'm gonna say that's recommended. Now with the screen, if you wanted to go for a very bare bones build where you could see everything, you don't need a case. However, I'm gonna be using a case, so I've got one here. Um, this one is from uh, Rykelp, but uh, there are lots of different options available. So I won't recommend a particular one, but this one should work well. I may just need to drill a hole in the side to get the, uh, the audio out, and I'll show you why in a second. So I'm gonna put that in the optional side. I'm gonna be using a Hi-Fi Berry, so one of these. Uh, this is the Hi-Fi Berry DAC Plus with a phono jack, or phone jack, so it's just a normal 3.5 millimeter jack. Now this plugs on the top of the board here, uh, just over the, the 40 pin GPIO, and it does have the ability to expand from the GPIO still, but it has a 3.5 millimeter jack coming out, and it'll appear over here, which might not line up too well with the holes in this case, so we might have to drill a hole. But I think this is pretty much uh, recommended. It will kick out audio at 192 kilohertz at 24-bit, uh, I believe. So you should get high-resolution audio out of it. Now, I won't be able to demonstrate that on YouTube because you won't be able to hear it, but it should sound a lot better. So I'm going to pop that over here. Next up, you're going to need an audio cable, just a 3.5 millimeter jack one. This one's got gold-plated bits on it, but that's not necessary. It's likely that you already have one of these lying around but I'm gonna pop it into the mandatory side over here. Then I've got a couple of bits just to make this project a little bit more fun. Uh, this is a IC Box 5000 milliamp hour power bank. This one's actually an alarm clock as well. It also has a temperature on there and stuff. So I just thought it'd be fun to try and make this portable. And in keeping with the portable theme, I've gone for this LG Music Flow portable Bluetooth speaker, but it actually has a line in input. So should be able to make the whole thing portable, plug the audio through this and be able to listen to it. Okay, so that is everything we're gonna need. 
uh, apart from a power supply. So if you were going to do it without a power bank, you're going to need yourself a 2.1 amp minimum power supply and it's going to have to be a good one. So to power the screen and the Raspberry Pi, it's going to need something good. So if you do run into problems with that, it's likely a power supply. Right, my SD card comes with a little adapter, which means I can plug it straight into my computer, which is great. There we go. So this is our blank SD card. Now what we're going to need to do is format that. So let's just get rid of that. We're going to use SD formatter. So it's selected the wrong device, so we'll just select the right one. 115 gig available. We're going to change that to format size adjustment on. Quick format's fine. You don't necessarily need to do this, but it's just good practice too. So once that's done formatting, excellent. So we can just exit that now. The next thing we need to do is load up Win32 Disk Imager. It's going to ask me for extended permissions, that's fine. And there we go. Now, if you go to Rune Audio, um, I'll put the link in the description, you're going to download the latest image for the Raspberry Pi 3. So we're going to select that now. So if you just click on this blue icon, it should load up this here, and then we'll jump to the desktop where I've got the image stored. And there it is. Now, it's selected device E here, so I'm just going to check that is the correct one. Uh, yeah, it's E is the one we want to uh, burn our image onto. And then all we need to do is click right. Check it's the right image before you do that. Now this is going to take a little while. It's, it's uh, burning at 15, 27 now, 20, 30-ish megabits per second. So it's going to take around two minutes. Right, now the write has been successful, we need to take the micro SD card out stick it into our Raspberry Pi, and then we're going to power it up. We're also going to plug in an Ethernet cable. Now this is important so that we can SSH into the device. And we need to do that so that we can set up a few things. Right, I've left the Pi running for a couple of minutes just so it goes through its first boot up before we try and SSH in. Now I'm using PuTTY, which um, is an easy one to use, but you can try other ones. And we're just going to type in Rune Audio. Uh, we're on port 22. SSH is the connection type, and we're just going to click open. And this should uh, bring up a little security alert about the host key, but we can just click yes on that. And then it's asking us for a login. So the login for this is root, and the password is rune. Now we're greeted with essentially a command prompt. And the first thing we're going to do is resize our partition. So we'll start with fdisk. Uh, forward slash dev forward slash mmc blk zero. Uh, and FTX allows us to mess around with the partition table. So let's have a look at our current partitions. So we type P and it gives us two here. We can see one at the top is 100 meg. It's a FAT32 thing. I'm not quite sure what that is, but we're going to be dealing with that Linux one at the bottom. So we're going to delete that entry into the partition table. We're going to delete partition two, and then we're going to recreate it. Now we're not actually doing anything to the data on the disk. This is just the partition table. So we'll do a new partition, primary partition, partition number two, and it's already selecting a first sector just here, and it's the same as the start of the old one, which is fine. So we can use the default. And then the last sector, if you notice on the previous one, it was 4401151. And that's not the end of the disk, essentially. This is the end of the disk here. So we want it to be the default, the last sector on the disk. And created a new partition two type of Linux. That's fine, so we don't need to do anything with that. And then all we need to do now is write that. So we press W. Uh, it says the partition table has been altered. So rereading the partition table failed. So I'm guessing what we need to do now is just reboot. So if we reboot, okay, so we can log in again. So it's root and then rune. 
And now we can resize the partition. So we've, we've changed the partition table, but we haven't changed the partition itself. So resize to FS, and then we need to use the, the actual dev.mmc blk0 partition2. And this will take a little bit of time, not very long, uh, about 20 seconds, I think. And then it will have resized the partition to the correct, well, correct size of your disk. So we're using a 128 gig SD card. And so some of that two gig has already been used. Okay, that's done. So now if we type DF, we can find out what the available size is left. So you can see up here we've got uh, used is 2%. So it means that we have a massive amount available, which is great. And it means we can then put music onto that as well. Next, we need to enable the I squared C interface. So we can type sudo, sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config.txt. So it's going to enable it in the boot config of the Raspberry Pi. So we need to go to the DT overlay. So this is just going to display the option for us. And we're going to delete the comment there. So it's, uh, it's got a little hash symbol there. So if we just delete that, it will enable that in the boot config. Now to save, we just do control write out, which is the O, enter, and then control X. And then we're going to reboot. Right, now just to check it's working, if we go to HTTP forward slash rune audio, it should bring us up the web interface. Now this is the thing that we're gonna be able to see on the display, but it's also a way that you can interact with this device if you're connected to the home network. So I can do the same thing on my phone And we'll have exactly the same interface here. So I can uh, look in my library. Not that there's anything in there at the moment because we haven't transferred any music over. So I can look in the, uh, the library on here and I can look in the, the library there. I can go to playback, I can go to the queue and I get exactly the same thing on both devices. So now we know that it's working, we want to jump up to the menu and we're going to look at network and it shows that I'm on the Ethernet network, but actually I want it to be Wi-Fi because I want to be able to interface with it via Wi-Fi, but I also want it to pull the album mark artwork from Wi-Fi. So that I'm not tied down to having an Ethernet cable or having embedded thumbnails in my music. So it's a very simple process for connecting to the Wi-Fi. It's gonna scan your available networks and then you can select the, uh, the one that's yours uh, and add in your password. So it's an easy process that I won't show you because I'll have to <laughs> reveal my password. But once you've gone through that, you no need, there's no need to have the ethernet uh, plugged in. Now, when we plug in the Hi-Fi Berry, we're putting it onto the 40 pin GPIO. It's really simple. Then we're just gonna plug our Raspberry Pi back in and then we'll go back over to the web interface and we're gonna enable the I squared C interface to play music from the Hi-Fi Berry. So if we click on menu, and we select MDP or MPD rather, and then we can select our audio output interface. And once that Hi-Fi Berry is plugged in, you'll be able to see this as an option as a Hi-Fi Berry DAC plus I squared C. So you don't need to use a DAC plus, you can use the normal Raspberry Pi analog out or HDMI out if you're gonna plug it into a television. But the, uh, the DAC plus should give you better audio, not that you'll be able to hear it in this video. So we'll select that and it will switch the audio output on the fly. Now that's done, all we need to do now is figure out how we're gonna get some music on there and then build its enclosure. Now we can get audio onto the device really, really easily. Once your Pi is sort of online, if you're connected to the network or to Wi-Fi, you're gonna be on your home network. Now we can load it up just like any kind of Samba share that you'd get on Windows. So we'll do, backslash backslash rune audio and then it loads up the shared drive that it has so if we go into music store and we go to local storage we're storing it on the sd card you can store it on a usb and plug it into one of the usb sockets and it will recognize it and load it up but we're going to be storing it on here so we're just going to drag our music folder over 
This will take a little bit of time because you're doing it over the network. You can see the transfer. Transfer speed's only around three megabits per second. So it will take some time, but once it's done, we'll be able to see it in the uh, Rune Audio interface. Right, I think we're about ready to put this together. Now, I've gone ahead and done a couple of bits just so that I don't have to do it on camera and take ages. Uh, so we've got a couple of wires soldered to the Hi-Fi Berry, and I've done that because the display needs power of its own. Uh, it has a USB socket here. However, it's not very accessible, and I'd rather not have two power cables, one going to the display and one going to the Pi. So what I've done is I've soldered two wires onto here, power and ground. So the power is the first pin on this side, and the third pin is ground. And they're going to go into the accessible pins on this board. So let's start putting this thing together. So first off, we're going to be putting the board on. Actually, no, we won't. We'll, what we'll do is we'll screw on the Raspberry Pi first, uh, this way around. Uh, in fact, before we do that, we'll pop the, um, the ribbon cable on. So the blue goes on the outside. It doesn't matter which way around this goes, just, well, which board it goes into first, just as long as you get it the right way around. That's secure. And then the same with this one. So blue goes on the outside of the board. So if I just turn that upside down over there, we can do it properly. There we go, and that's locked in. And then when we turn this over, we can put the screws in. Brilliant. Now we can add on our Hi-Fi Berry. There we go, nice and secure. And if I turn this around, we'll be able to access, access the pins over here. So the first one is five volts. And then the very last one is ground. And then we can just pop it in its case, hopefully. We've got it the right way around. This cable's gonna bend around a little bit to let that go in. This could do with being a little bit more out of the way, I think. So let's bend those up and over. A little bit of finesse required. And there we are. And then if we flip this over now, we'll see we've got our Hi-Fi Berry jack is exposed and we've got some screws down here. And the case came with some screws to put this in, so we'll pop those in now. There we are. So this is just a test setup. We've still got the frame to go around. I just wanted to put this together without worrying too much about having to take it apart again. So let's plug it in and see what happens. I have the uh, small little display here. This is the uh, IC box um, USB power bank. So hopefully this will be good enough. Well, we've got, immediately we've got the, uh, the rainbow warning box, which means this isn't really kicking out the voltage that's required. However, it's still gonna work. Um, that just tells you that the voltage is dipping a, below a bit. So it comes up with this login section, which will quickly disappear and then show us the, uh, the interface. And there we go. Our touch screen should work. There we go. So we can go to our library, we can look at our stored music. I'll need to refresh the sources list. Oh, 
Oh, that has refreshed, hasn't it? And then we've got the music folder and we have uh, an album in here. So there's no speaker attached yet. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll get this frame, pop it on. We'll take all these bits of plastic off and then we'll have a listen. So let's get this speaker out. God, it's a lot smaller than I imagined. I'm not sure how I, big I expected it to be. So there we go. I don't think I need anything else from the box. So let's just get the plastic off. So it seems the battery is running low on this, so it wasn't working. But I've just plugged in a power bank to it so we can get back onto it. So I can alter the volume on the touch screen itself. Uh, and I can also skip ahead or back in time. You'll notice there's a picture of a rather handsome young devil there. That's because this is a YouTube audio library piece of music and it doesn't come with artwork. So I added my own face on there. We can also listen to something that's a little bit more high resolution. So if I jump back to the library, which, oh, I'd have to press it a bit harder. Uh, so this is something um, I wrote. It's kind of like an audio play. So if you just double tap, does that, does that work? in the queue. Oh, it's the button there, isn't it? Add and play. The touch screen's a little bit picky. So this isn't actually, I thought this was a high resolution version, but it's actually mono 16 bit 48 kilohertz. Uh, so it's not really going to make any difference. But it's such a nice little thing to have. Um, I would certainly recommend picking up the various bits. Reichelt have got an, an excellent range of uh, sort of hobbyist electronics and components and various things like this power bank or this music flow speaker for pretty reasonable prices. So I would recommend checking them out. Lots of other places you can get them too, but Reichelt kindly provided this stuff for me so I could make this amazing assortment of, um, of things and create something where, you know, I can transform my record collection and uh, CD collection into something which I can pop on here. So I'm very happy. Did I press record?